through a policy of protection of infant industries, uh, high tariffs, subsidies, open real factories, revitalize mines, open new mines in limestone, in clay, revitalize the gold mines and end the zamazamas, but also open factories in the plastic sector, uh, open factories in the textile sector, factories, real jobs, permanent jobs. So in terms of addressing the large-scale unemployment that South Africa is actually experiencing at the moment, Commissar in laws in this video is actually outlining the EFF's practical procedures in trying to address the problem of unemployment in South Africa. Let's listen to what he has to say and then I'll be back for some interesting analysis from the EFF manifesto itself. My final point that I need to speak to you about is of course you're um, hoping to swap your one cap, the Commissar of the EFF, you'll remain that, but you would like to become the Premier <laughs> of Gauteng as well. So. This is something that I'm, I'm, I'm finding very interesting and I'm, I'm almost liking some of the things that you're saying because being a Gauteng resident, living here my whole life, watching the deterioration of this province has been one of the, the most heartbreaking things to see. As the Premier of Gauteng, what would you come in and do and change in this province? Very quickly, two things. Firstly, we believe that the sphere of the province is unnecessary in terms of the administration of the country. 9% of the division of revenue goes into local government. That's an anomaly because that's a cool phase of service delivery. So two things that we're going to do. We're going to lead a massive process of cancelling tenders, building internal state capacity, which will create mass, hundreds of thousands of jobs. Secondly, we're going to lead a massive industrialization policy where we select products that we've got an international competitive advantage of through a policy of protection of infant industries, uh, high tariffs, subsidies, open real factories, revitalize mines, open new mines in limestone, in clay, revitalize the gold mines and end the zamazamas, but also open factories in the plastic sector, uh, open factories in the textile sector, factories, real jobs, permanent jobs. Not Nancy Spani or Nasi Spani, which is basically like those food parcels that are distributed during elections. And after elections, they are nowhere to be found. We're talking about permanent jobs where people produce products mm. that are constantly needed, not just in the South African market, but also in other parts of the world, particularly the continent. Proper jobs. And that's, that's how you know the EFF is a solution. It's not promising you an in-service training. It's promising you a job in a factory, a job in an industry. A job in government where you build and maintain roads, you waste collectors are permanent jobs, qualitatively paid that must deliver qualitative services. That's what we will be doing. It's a Gauteng that is going to have massive economic growth at the center of which are real jobs. Yeah, so what do you guys think about what he, what Commissar Ndlozi has just shared? Um, share your thoughts in the comments. But here in this video, I'll be analyzing from the EFF manifesto itself on what its view, its vision to solve the problem of unemployment in South Africa and probably the wider Africa actually is. So let's go. The EFF manifesto actually says that um, as of 2023, the expanded definition of unemployment in South Africa has reached an alarming 42%. And it means that approximately 15 million people are excluded from meaningful economic participation with some completely discouraged from finding employment altogether in South Africa. South Africa has also alarming levels of unemployment since before the dawn of democracy, despite the modest economic growth it recorded over the years. Okay, and that he also argues that South Africa's economy is one of the is one of chronic unemployment, deep inequality, and massive poverty. Now, how does the EFF plan to resolve the massive poverty and unemployment that's actually occurring? in South Africa at the moment. One, the EFF wants to establish a state-owned housing and roads company that will deal with social housing and roads infrastructure backlog. In, the, in other words, in the short and, uh, to medium term, it would, this will result, according to the EFF, to 4 million jobs already, just by dealing with the backlogs of um, you know, this weakness in state-owned housing and road companies and in dealing with social housing and road infrastructure, it will create 4 million jobs. 
Two, the EFF wants to establish a state-owned security company that will insource all security personnel working in the government facilities. And it says that it will immediately create 1.2 million sustainable and quality jobs without departing from the existing government budget expenditure. So it wants to work with the budget expenditure already in this regard, but it wants now, it wouldn't um, outsource security personnel anymore but now it would insource security personnel in the government facilities and then save money from the budget already already um, made for for um personnel outsourcing okay so by that regard it argues that to already save um so much to pr provide 1.2 million quality jobs already in south africa three the eff wants to establish a state-owned cleaning horticulture and landscaping company that would provide these cleaning services and horticulture and landscaping services to the state and public facilities which will lead to over 1 million sustainable jobs so rather than outsourcing cleaning or giving cleaning to private um, you know uh, partners private entrepreneurs to take care of in horticulture and landscaping uh, the EFM wants to maintain and have its own state-owned services right that would now bring jobs for people um to meet up those needs right um some one other interesting one before i end this video the aff also wants to ensure that a minimum of 80 percent of goods and services procured by the state at all levels and at all state companies will be domestically produced. So in this in, in, in its domestication policy, it wants to ensure that 80% of goods and services procured by the state at all levels would be domestically produced rather than imported and all, and that alone would create a lot of jobs. The EFF also argues that it will ensure that the minimum of 50% of all of South Africa's mineral resources would be locally beneficiated and processed and the value added will create millions of jobs and create new cities. This is a perspective from the EFF. So in terms of the minerals, the localized, the, the you know, processing and the value creation of those minerals, rather than sending the raw minerals, um, you know, externally to be processed and then you know, value added abroad and imported back into the, the nation of South Africa. It wants to add that value within South Africa and locally process them so that there, there will be more jobs produced through this perspective. It also argues that the EFF would ensure that all food for local consumption is produced and processed on a massive scale in South Africa, and that this would happen through the intensification of small-scale farming and agriculture, and by giving strategic support to all small-scale agricultural operations, including providing trade routes. All food traders in South Africa will be compelled by law to buy South African food products and to ensure operations that produce these food products, okay? And for me, this one is really interesting because um, we know there's a lot of argument in South Africa that the moment the, um, the, the farming, especially, we know that the EFF wants to expropriate land without compensation to a majority of land owned and controlled and farmed by white Africana farmers today. So the EFF, I, I suspect, and I, I, you know, you can correct me in the comments, but the EFF wants to expropriate all of that land and give to um, the disenfranchised black, you know, farmers to own land and begin cultivation. And a lot of um, critique have been argued that, you know, these Africana farmers, it, which is a fact anyway, that they are light years ahead of the um, black African farmers in terms of modern, modernized, mechanic, mechanized farming, okay? But now the EFF wants to swap that around by emphasizing on small-scale farming and small-scale agriculture, which is a really familiar terrain by many black farmers, you see. So in that way, it is trying to circumvent the need for massive investment in training black farmers in mechanized you know, farming, which it has been criticized that if it takes it out of um, the system of South Africa at the moment, the food industry and South Africa would immediately become Zimbabwe. So the EFF wants to circumvent this, this um, critique by focusing on small-scale agriculture, small-scale farming, which is uh, familiar to many black farmers at this, and then probably still sustain the economy. I think that, that's a really interesting interesting perspective. I, I really didn't think about that. But um, 
um, it, it still feels like tricky in a way because um, I don't know how much uh, small scale agriculture, small scale farming, or, although I think small scale agriculture has the capacity to, to be mechanized also, but there's really, there would need to be a lot of training and a lot of organization around that so that the quantity of food that's been produced already by the large scale mechanized farming done by many Africana Boa farmers at the moment um, would be able to be managed and sustained so that the country doesn't slump suddenly into a really dark hole and then create more aggravation by the already hungry, unemployed black South Africans or disenfranchised black South Africans um, by these massive changes. But um, what do you guys think? I think the EFF is really visionary in its push to set South Africa free from the chuckles of um, external control of its economy. But um, what do you guys think? Share your thoughts in the comments.